Come dead eye, dead eye chosen. That'll work. Here's somebody with a troubled past, drawn into the spotlight of a story that's already begun. We're already at a crossroads. Choosing a path in life is that fork in the road where you make a choice or simply stop living. But for you, it's not only a crossroad, but a choice. A reflection of your key, the primal energy that flows through everything. Let me introduce myself. I'm the light and bright side of you, or your inner voice to be precise. An echo of balance and consequence of your actions as you move forward. Seems more like you're being light-headed if you ask me, but you'll come around eventually. But what comes around goes all the way back around. So it's better to stick to your instincts. You can't fight what's in your nature. In your nature? And here I was hoping we'd be all about natural selection, survival of the strongest and so forth. If that's not instinct, then I don't know what is. Natural selection is all about evolution and progress, and as soon as there's enough light, darkness will disappear! Right is always right. Stories of death and the bodies left behind. A reminder that we're at the mercy of nature and the one that preys on others. Do you remember the beast that shattered your family? Or did you choose to forget? You turned your back on our world and got lost in your own. Meanwhile, the predator only grew stronger. Better make a run for it. This is not the time nor place to end this story.
This time, it was best to run and live to fight another day. Let us hope you're ready for it when it comes. The predator isn't the only threat. The wildlife started to mutate when the end of days began, and the tree of life started to die. Oil sludges everywhere. To most, it only means death, but some have adapted to the new environment and changed with it. Evolution has its ways.
Oh, that helps work the kinks out. Look, an emergency box from the once was. A rare sight. Pipe looks weak. The claw bar should come in handy. Time to find a way out of this place. No, really, I mean it.
The Morks produce biomatter in their multi-organ that they shed under distress. Rods that affect the cellular coding strands of any living being when absorbed. Including you. Shouldn't take much more. Toxanol built vessels called Arcs to save themselves from the impending doom. But was it too late? It is only from the flight logs of the single Ark they left behind that we know other Arcs traveled through the sky and beyond. It seems those that came before us never lost hope in finding a new home for their kind. There are few records of the chain of events that led to the big apocalypse eons ago, but it's clear the world wasn't prepared for how recklessly the Toxanol Corporation would make its mark on the world. Their rare earth mining and nuclear industries generated tons of waste and, without consideration for the future, they dumped it all in landfills until they ran out of space. That's when they made the big mistake. They began dumping the toxic waste in the surf just off the coast instead, assuming that it would sink and decay with time. And they were right, but no one was prepared for what was about to unfold. Once in the surf, the radiation interfered with the genetics of the wildlife and created bizarre mutations in their offspring. It had an inconceivable impact on biodiversity and the entire ecosystem. The world as they knew it crumbled as nature retaliated. It would never be the same again, and what remained of it became ours.
sound of spark metal going pew pew is never a good thing. It's coming from behind that door. A warning label. The box looks like a potential brain melt. It's going to take a bit of puzzling to short circuit the door. Just a few moves left. Make them count. There you go. The wheeled one is outnumbered. You'd better help him out. the last of them. Let's talk to the wheeled one before backup arrives. He wants to thank you for taking his side against the scavengers. He sounds familiar. You just can't figure out why. Kuzata Ghetto. He presents himself as out of date. He knows he's way overdue, but he hasn't given up. Yeah, move for bo. Boom. He doesn't seem surprised that you don't recognize him. You were just a child back then. The night everything changed. Ba. There have been rumors of a one-eyed ronin seen outside the Great Wall, and he's happy to see it's true. The legend of the one-eyed child that grew up as an outcast is old and sad. The child could have been anyone, but the evil it had fled had left a mark, a facial scar to remember the past. There's no doubt you're the child, and that what Looper Lupin did to your village, your Moomer and Popsy, was the beginning of the end. He says it has taken you a long time to bring the past back up to the present, to find your way back, but he's grateful you have. It was after the attack that the unity fell apart. Your Moomer's disciples divided and formed tribes as a reaction to the blight that had fallen upon the land. Had it not been for the Tree of Life, no one would have survived. He hopes you at least remember the tree. <laughs> Asks if you were tired, as it's a bit of a hike here from the village. He wonders if your Mooma knows you are here. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> You're such a good child, so you probably did. Even the young forget. <laughs> he understands why you came all the way out here to see them, the potato people. <laughs> <laughs> the Potato People, or Nono, are a wonder somehow interlinked with this little tree here fueling its source of life. <laughs> you might be right. Like potatoes, they're packed with energy, an excellent source of key. <laughs> <laughs> the Nono prefer to hide in glitter grass. He says you should get over there and ruffle it. See if you can make one come out of hiding. You've found one. You should be proud. They don't come out for everyone. The Nono's key energy is just what the Pensai needs to complete its cycle and grow into a tree of life. Only time will tell. At least his intention is to dedicate his life to it. He has the feeling the fate of the world depends on it. You will need to support the tree for a long time to come. The only way it'll grow tall is with the burst of key released from the Nono as they become one with the tree. You will need a net to catch the Nono, and he wants you to use his, but asks you to be gentle. The Nono are sensitive beings, an embodiment of key, the primal energy. <laughs> you handle that net like you've never done anything else. He's impressed. Well, well, well. One day, he hopes the tree will have grown tall enough to sustain the world. <laughs> but today, your focus is getting this one to become one with the tree. <laughs> 